not going to ask where you're going to come from. Right. And they're probably not going to ask either. Sell somewhere legitimate, and wherever you sell your Nemo, I'm sure you're an upstanding citizen. You're going to do it all legal places. That's all I have to say about that. You cannot sell alcohol on the beach. I just can't say um, Taxes are the biggest bill you're ever going to pay in your life. It's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. We all take it as it is what it is, and we just pay. You hit over the head and pay too much tax. We don't even think about it. We're trying to save $10 on our cell phone bill. And the 30 grand that we're going to pay the city, that we're going to pay the government, we don't even think about it. Do everything you can to minimize your tax bill. I don't know your personal lives. I don't know what you do. But let me tell you something. If you open an LLC, every time you go to dinner, business expense. Every time you go on a vacation, business retreat. I went to DR. I wrote a few emails. I made some phone calls. Had a video chat. <laughs> I went away with one of my, one of my partners came with me, but it was a vacation. We were chilling. So Sua, chilling. He ain't got my phone on the beach, like chilling. This is expensive, right? Clothes, weird. Clothes not usually. It's very, it depends what you do. You know, depends depends what your side business is going to be. Uh, mileage on your car. So you can't really write off for car payment, but you can write off usage on your car every time you drive for work. And there is a specific amount per mile that you can write off every time you drive anywhere for work. Like I drove from my house in Forest Hills to here today. Every last bit of that plus the toll is written off. I wear and tear on my car, on my tires, on my engine, on my brakes. They're all separate. My, my tire, my engine, and my brakes are separate. And they all get wear and tear separately, and independently and differently. So they all get a write-off of their own, right? Work on your tax bill as much as you can. Take a fine-tuned comb through that thing. Get involved, and listen, it's, it's intimidating. I'm not saying that any of this stuff is easy. It's very simple, but it's not easy. But like, this is your life. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, do it or don't do it. Just like, do it, do it or don't do it, but like, if you do it, you're gonna help yourself. If you don't do it, you're not gonna help yourself. And that's it. Minimize your tax bill. And again, don't get, go ahead. Um, it depends. Like you can go. It's cheap on like legal zone. But you have to make sure you're doing it right on legal zone. The legal zone, I think, it's like 800 bucks. If you use a lawyer, well, you can get yeah, a lawyer. The legal zone can be your lawyer, but if you go to a lawyer, it's going to be like 12, 1500 bucks. But again, if you're going to save 13 percent of your taxes. If you make 15 grand a year, like you make 50 grand a year, that's it's also pre-tax, by the way. Pre-tax dollars. So anyone have like a Metro Park to work? No? Alright, so if you can, get a Metro Park to work. You know why? Because it's pre-tax dollars. Pre-tax dollars and post-tax dollars are different. Pre-tax, so the, 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 when you own an LLC, you can pay yourself before you pay everyone else. So say I made hundred thousand dollars, but I had seventy-one in expenses. You know what I get taxed on? No, twenty-nine. I don't get taxed on hundred thousand. You get taxed on. I get taxed on twenty-nine thousand. I pay myself first. But then I get a double. Double ain't my day. <laughs> pay yourself first. If you don't pay yourself first, it's your choice. You're not doing it. Now, granted, again, you work in some place again. Get paid in your LLC, but start aside and do something that you can. Listen, we have 24 hours in a day. We have work for eight hours. I mean, you know, you can be a nurse or whatever. You sleep for six hours. If you need more, if you need more than six hours of sleep, work on it. Those other four or five, six hours, do something. Learn something. Yo, we have Google. You can, you can learn, you can take free Harvard courses. You can learn six languages. You can do anything you want. Anyone in this, anyone in this room bilingual? Mad translator money. Yeah. Be a translator for a lawyer. Be a translator for some oil dude. Be a translator for somebody. Be a translator for, for a government official. If you're, you're Dominican, reach out to the Dominican consulate. Hey, when you're in Canada, don't be a translator. Yeah, of course. 
you have to. Stuff. 
And then you'll know more stuff.
same book. Here is how fees get in. So someone's 80 years old. They invested 
$10,000 in the mutual fund at 20 years old. They invest in the index fund. You know what an index fund is? So a stock is a stock. It's a water bottle company. They have a water bottle company stock. But that stock is traded on the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is called an index. You can buy something called an ETF, which is it's a stock of the entire Dow Jones. So this company might be doing poorly, but the Dow Jones is doing well. So it's, a, it's an average aggregate of all, all, all the stocks at once. Do you know what the S&P is? The S&P 500? Do you know why it's called the S&P 500? The 500 best performing companies on the Dow Jones. So if you invest in the S&P and you buy an index fund, you are going to do well. Because if a company on the S&P 500 starts doing poorly, they get kicked off and a new one comes up. So the S&P will never do poorly. Yes, it'll go down at some point. Markets fluctuate. But overall trajectory, it's going to go up. And if you invest in the S&P and you throw S&P ETFs into a mutual fund, you're going to grow an almost sure bet tax-free with compound interest. And those numbers work out here. An 80 year old invested $10,000 at 20 with an index fund with zero fees because he had no fund manager. He had his own, he did his own mutual fund. The growth at 7%, which is you know, kind of healthy, but not crazy. His ending balance is $574,000 for his four hundred sixty-four dollars An 80 year old that invested $10,000 at 20%, invested in a regular mutual fund with 2.5% fee to a manager, growth at 7%, $140,000. He lost $434,000 because of a 2.5% interest, 2.5% manager fee. So many mutual funds out there at 2%, 3%, 1.5%. 1.5% is a little. 1.5%. Through time and compound interest, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they invest the same amount of money and they're the same age. And it's $460,000 left. Huge, off the 2.5% interest. So what I would do is if you're investing in a mutual fund, I would see what the management fees are. And if you don't love management fees, you can roll your money into whatever mutual fund you want with either lower or no management fees. Also, there's a difference between a broker and a fiduciary. So a broker, I know, it's a lot of words, I'll explain. A broker is a person that sells a stock, sells a mutual, sells the securities of, of whatever kind. A fiduciary and a broker makes commission, which means they have an agenda to sell you stuff to make you buy it. A fiduciary does not earn a commission. A fiduciary only makes money if you make money and earns a salary. So their information is going to be far less bias than a broker's. Are there good brokers out there that really take care of their customers? Absolutely. But if we're speaking in general about the law of averages, if you have 100 fiduciaries in a room and 100 brokers in a room, I want to mess with 100 fiduciaries. It's just what I want to do. Got That's all we have to talk about. I mean, they don't make a commission off of trade. They are just paid solely. And you think, you know, there's, there's different ones that make different money. Some of them have $5 million a year, some of them are just $400. You have to find one that works. It's a market. Um, never, ever, ever use a check cashing. Never! They take like 8%, 10%. 12% depends how big your check is. Over 20 years? I just showed you that 2.5% robs you of $460,000. You know what 8 or 10% is going to rob you of? We're talking about millions of dollars. Because you, know, you can make $35,000 a year and be a millionaire. Again. That's right. Part of compounding interest. I just showed you. I got to invest in 10 grand. I got invested 10 grand. This guy invested 40 grand. I mean, two and a half million dollars by the time he's 65. This specific person? Plus driver. 
thousand dollars a year is not a lot of money. And he only invested for 10 years. Not a lot of money. It's just that we aren't exposed to these things in school. And it's so confusing. And the industry uses lots of big words to make you reliant on them. A broker wants you to be reliant on them. A broker doesn't want you to be able to do it yourself. Now, again, that's not a nefarious idea. He's a salesman. He has a job. He has to make his quota. He, he's a broker. He's got to do his job. His job is to sell you stuff. Don't get mad at him for doing his job. Be upset with yourself for not knowing his job better than him.
that many of the people that you have the opportunity to meet this week, um, and the guys who were here for Bethany just they said it as well, will serve as mentors to you. I mean, it doesn't have to be like an on, it doesn't have to be like an everyday mentorship program where like you have to like intensely say, hey, what do I do next? But it can be this thing of like when you have to ask a question and, and you need the right response for a particular topic, that if you reach out to him, he's gonna respond to you and say something. That would be a soundboard. I would be honest, I don't have the time to chase you around so you have to contact me. But if, if you contact me, I will go back and make sure that I'm And I think that's true of like most of the people who are gonna be here this week. They they do this, they come here uh, to do these workshops with me and, and interact and to do our quality sprint series workshops as well because they are invested in, in all of you. And what you're trying to do is trying to accomplish for yourselves in your lives and taking these leaps forward. Uh, by actually being here, you know, like in the freezing cold temperatures of the Arctic, Northeast, or whatever, wherever we are, um, coming out and actually trying to get the stuff, which is why they get inspired to come and do this stuff, and then they want to make sure that they're, they're put, their investment is going uh, is going to actually produce stuff, right? So you looked at all the slides that Phil showed you about all the different ventures that he got involved. In. You know, he understands like. If if it doesn't make sense, if it's not making money, that's it, I'm done, cool. Let's put it away. It was an experience, I have it, and I can share it. Like, as this is my experience, like we all have members, we have the members to share. But I'm moving on to the thing that's gonna make success, right? So that if you, the investment is here, you made the investment, you see here, you spoke to you. Now the question is like, what's the next step for you? So that if you wanna have that continuing contribution from it, we have the opportunity to connect with them on Facebook or Instagram, whatever you do or email him and he respond. He's really good. And it's true, I'm like, everybody's gonna be in this group. He's really good about it. He bothers me actually more than I bother him, I think. Uh, he invited me out, he did invite me out to go uh, help out at the thing out on Wednesday nights, and I will try to get out there. Give out food, I'm gonna try to invite some bar group out there a couple of times when it gets a little warmer so that I don't get sued for staging the frostbite or anything. Um, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, 34 to 378 by that 7-Eleven. So he's great. So um, he's all right. And then we both got engaged like around the same time. He, he made me look. He made me look like I wasn't really working very hard. Cause he like he took his uh, fiance to Paris on trains and up the Eiffel Tower and all this kind of stuff. I just went to the Dominican Republic and had like a little small boutique hotel set up with like little cameras and things, you know. It's different, yeah. <laughs> Some trying to remember so yeah. 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 Oh, projects, I feel like I came up with a little bit. <laughs> oh, but, uh, let's give uh, Phil a nice round of applause. <laughs>